welcome back to my channel. I'm Jane Wild, and today I was thinking I'm gonna make a video ranking every single movie written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. If you know my taste, then you know that I'm a huge Tarantino fan. He's probably my favorite filmmaker. And I would say there's very, very few filmmakers that their entire catalog is so fucking good. Usually, you know, there's a couple duds here and there. And there's definitely some Tarantino movies that are better than others, hence the ranking. But yeah, he's my favorite filmmaker. I have such a crush on Quentin. If you're watching this, I will let you put my big toe in your mouth. It's really pretty right now, it's French. But yeah, I just thought I would go through and rank them from my least favorite to my favorite and tell you guys why. He only has 10 movies that he's written and directed, so it's not that difficult. And yeah, let's just get right into it. So I have a list here of all the movies he's written and directed, and they're in order. Looking through, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put Death Proof as my least favorite. The reason for that being, I saw Death Proof after I saw, you know, Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, these are some of my favorite movies of all time. So when I saw Death Proof, I don't know what I was expecting because people had already said, oh, this is not anywhere close to his best movie. It's a double feature. Um, but I watched it. I went in with an open mind. I definitely thought the first part of Death Proof was more interesting than the second. But I just found, I don't know, it was like a little, it was a little weird. And all his movies are weird, don't get me wrong, but weird, like, not in a good way, not in a, not in an entertaining way. It was definitely very old-fashioned, and it was paying homage to, like, grindhouse cinema, which is, you know, valid, not necessarily my taste. So grindhouse comes in, not grindhouse, death proof. Death proof and grindhouse... I don't even know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Death Proof comes in at number 10. Number nine is going to be Hateful Eight, which is a great movie. Definitely gets better in the second half. So if you're not someone that can sit through a slightly slower first half, which is like 90 minutes to get to the more exciting second half, then you're probably not going to enjoy Hateful Eight. It's a very slow build but it has Samuel L. Jackson who's one of the best actors of all fucking time we adore him in every movie but he really shines in Tarantino movies so yeah Hateful Eight was good definitely picks up in the second half but not not good enough to be higher up on this list number eight would be Reservoir Dogs. I was going back and forth between would number eight be Reservoir Dogs or Jackie Brown? And I wanna say, I was thinking of Jackie Brown and I think that I like it more because uh, Robert De Niro's part in it is like really fun and more enjoyable to watch. Also, I mean, you know, I'm not like a misandrist, but when a movie only has men, like there's no women in the whole movie, it's like a little, not bad, but it's it's less enjoyable to watch than, than if there was a, a nice lady stuck in there. So in Jackie Brown, we obviously have Jackie Brown and she's a very compelling character. And I, I like the plot of Jackie Brown more than Reservoir Dogs. But Reservoir Dogs, which I watched during quarantine for the first time, 
it did kind of make me obsessed with the song Stuck in the Middle with You for a little bit. Cause, and I was literally tweeting out asking, are there any more songs that play during sadistic moments in movies? I don't know why I was just like feeling that for a bit. Um, but yeah. Uh, Reservoir Dogs at number eight. Jackie Brown at number seven. Gave an example for both of them. They both deserve their spot. And this is just a testament. His filmography is so good that even the movies at the very bottom of this list are still fucking classics and favorites and some of the best movies I've ever watched. But, you know, it, it's competition for those top five spots on this list. So, okay, next is going to be... Django Unchained. Django. And Django is a really, 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 really amazing movie. So enjoyable to watch. Um, Tarantino, he makes so many of these epic, long movies where it's like, there's so much going on. There's so much plot happening. And I guess in this case, the spot, it would be between um, Inglorious Bastards or Django. One is a movie about slaves and one is a movie about Nazis. So I'm going to go ahead and say Django gets the number six spot. Django is, it's a really compelling movie from, um, Christoph Waltz or Waltz. I don't know how the fuck you say it, but it starts with the W. So I'm going to call him Christoph Waltz. And he really shines in both of these movies. He plays very, very different characters. In Django, he plays a, you know, a kind, helpful person. And in Inglorious Bastards, he's a literal Nazi. <laughs> so, but he's really, really good. And then it sucks because now I'm thinking and I'm like, does the Brad Pitt in Inglorious Bastards, does that beat Leo in Django? Because I totally for a second forgot that Leo was in Django. Honestly, I'm changing my ranking and I'm putting Inglorious Bastards as number six and Django is going to be number five because I don't know. I don't know. I think Django's honestly the more compelling movie. I think it it moves better. I found Inglorious Bastards had a couple of side plots that I didn't care as much about, like the woman Shoshana. Um, it was not as compelling as, you know, Jamie Foxx. Django is so well casted. Such a fucking good movie. So yeah. We got Inglorious Bastards at six, Django Unchained at five. Now we're up to the big four, the top four. There's only four movies left and you guys know what they are. And this is, it's not difficult. This, this part is not difficult. I would say the lower rankings were harder because I'm like, where am I fitting every little thing? But Number four, I have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. A lot of people didn't like this movie. Dude, it's a slice of life movie. Some movies don't have like a crazy action plot, but I guess people weren't expecting that from Tarantino because most of his movies previously are so plot heavy, like Django, Inglorious Bastards, you know, Kill Bill, whatever. So people, they were not... They were not loving the slice of life aspect of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I loved it. I'm obsessed with the 60s and 70s and just that whole vintage era, specifically like old Hollywood. And it was really like a love letter to the beauty of Los Angeles and the beauty of Hollywood and California and the entertainment industry before the Manson family kind of just fucked everything up and just casted this cloud and this shadow over 
Hollywood. I thought Margot Robbie was amazing. She was perfect in that role. I thought Leo was perfect. I thought Brad Pitt was amazing. Like, I don't know what else I can even say. It's it's such a good movie. It's it's rather long. It is a long one. But if you stick through it, the second time I watched it, I really loved it more than the first time. The first time, it was a little confusing when it would go in and out of these um, spaghetti westerns and then be in this character and that. And I was kind of like, what the fuck is going on? But the second time I watched it, I understood more and I was like, okay, you know, there's little like side moments and you just need to like kind of keep up. And I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was such a beautiful movie and really just the aesthetic was perfection. <sighs> Top three. And yes, we're counting Kill Bill as two movies, obviously. It's two completely different movies, one and two. And I would say having to decide which one I like more out of one and two is probably one of the hardest decisions to make because you can't have one without the other. Two is longer, but one is like, there's so many iconic moments, but there's also iconic moments in two. I guess it really just depends on which, which characters you like more and which fight scenes you're more into. Some people, I think I'm gonna say, Two, no, one is ranked number three. The reason for that being the confrontation with Bill is one of the best moments in fucking movie history. Um, not to mention the, the whole sequence with her trainer. And I thought the fights in, the fights in Kill Bill 1 are more entertaining and more exciting, but I thought overall as like a package to just had more to offer. It was longer, more story and the conclusion of the story, which is super important. So I'm putting Kill Bill 1 is in third place and Kill Bill 2 is in second place. Kill Bill period is like, if you put it together as one movie, it is the best movie ever and it would be number one. But because it's two separate movies, it like kind of splits the vote. And I can't decide which one I like more, but I did just did. So Kill Bill 2 reigns supreme. And then number one. I mean, did you really think anything else was going to be number one on this list? Then motherfucking Pulp Fiction, literally my favorite movie of all time. I have Pulp Fiction memorabilia on my wall, which I'm not going to like show it now because I don't want to move the camera. Yeah, Pulp Fiction's my favorite movie. It's a perfect movie. Everything about it is perfect. The dialogue, the casting, the aesthetics of the actors, um, the plot, the fact that it's non-linear. There has never been a better movie, in my opinion, than Pulp Fiction. And that might be like, you know, a cliche opinion. Cliches are there for a reason, because if everybody thinks something, it probably is somewhat true but yeah Pulp Fiction is one of the most quotable movies it's an iconic movie you could see a photo of someone and know exactly what it is and there's so much to interpret within Pulp Fiction there's so much to discuss because there's a lot of unanswered questions and I think that just makes it better I genuinely don't know how Mr. Tarantino came up with this inside his brain and wrote it out and they created it. Uma Thurman is a fucking legend. Just from Pulp Fiction and Kill Bill alone, she never needed to do another movie after 2001. She's a fucking legend. Travolta is a fucking legend. Samuel L. Jackson, fucking legend. Like what else is there to say? Pulp Fiction is the best Tarantino movie, and it's the best movie of all time, period. So there you have it. That is my ranking of every Tarantino written and directed movie. And I think my list is pretty good. I think a lot of people would agree with my list. If you 
agree with my list, let me know that you agree. If you disagree, tell me what you disagree on. Where would you rank stuff? What would your list be? I'm really curious to know because I think you could ask 100 people and get 100 different lists or you could ask 100 and get all the same. It really just depends on what somebody's looking for in their movies, but he has so much to offer from his movies. I really am a true Tarantino stan. So thank you very much for watching and peace and love to you. Have a lovely day. Go watch Pulp Fiction. Bye.